welcome, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to see you today for another perfume review. And today perfume video is about the best spring perfume. Yes, birds are singing, at least in Paris. The sun is shining. It starts to be the spring. And in this video, I'm going to show you my favorite, the best of the best, of course, the creme de la creme the most iconic spring perfume ever you know the dreamy the chic the classy the timeless the one you should absolutely get for spring if you are starting to build a capsule fragrance collection so let's start this video so let's start with the first one and it's one of my favorite flowery perfume this is of course coco mademoiselle launched in 2001 with the nose jack polge i love this one this is a citrusy opening perfume with orange bergamot orange blossom there's also a blend of rose jasmine mimosa ylang ylang so super flowery with something a little bit fresh and light at the opening and on the base it's patchouli and white mask so it's fresh floral vibrant and opulent at the same time it's a very well balanced flowery perfume it's young it's classic and it's of course a crowd pleaser and i have a story about this one because last time i wore this one it was in miami i was invited for a lunch or a diner i don't really remember i used to wear this perfume in miami a lot like a lot because there's something fresh and green at the opening and it was very pleasant to wear this one in miami especially with a super hot weather yeah it wasn't glowing actually it was the only you know perfume flowery perfume which were not glowing at all with the humidity and I remember wearing this perfume in a super expensive place in Miami called La Petite Maison by the way I love this uh, restaurant I really like it very nice uh, French cuisine and my neighbor sitting next to me it was a guy actually a guy was staring at us and there was also a daughter who was also staring at us and at one moment the daughter and she said are you wearing uh, coco mademoiselle and she asked me are you wearing this perfume and i was like yeah yeah, yeah this is coco mademoiselle and she said okay my uh, friend my brother and my dad right right there they love this perfume and they keep telling me she's wearing mademoiselle she's smelling so good they were noticing me all around me because of my perfume and yes this is a crowd pleaser you are going to get a lot of compliments with this one some people doesn't really like this one they prefer sometimes coco uh, coco chanel but coco mademoiselle is the young classic i'm gonna say coco mademoiselle is the younger lighter fresher version of coco it's less mature than coco it's a crowd pleaser but it's a beautiful vibrant spring perfume you should definitely get this one and the second one is the Miss Dior collection so I love the original version but right now I'm talking about the new version of Miss Dior because there's something more springy about the new version and there's a 2017 version which I have and I wear during the spring and the new one of the 2000 21 i'm going to talk about both the you know the reformulate version of miss dior is much much better i think for a spring and in this one it's a beautiful bouquet of pinky flowers you get this pinky direction uh, of course there's also some white flowers inside but the direction of this perfume is super pinky with the peony the freesia, the orange, the bergamot, the rose, the jasmine and a little bit of patchouli in the base. It's definitely blooming and you also get the blooming version which is even more blooming. So even more, uh, I'm gonna say pinky than this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's a blooming bouquet and it's definitely sweet. Uh, the patchouli makes this perfume very sweet and creamy on the dry down, so it might be a little bit glowing for you. Uh, and it reminds me definitely of La Vie Belle, okay? Definitely a, a reminder of La Vie Belle version. We are in the flowery, sweetie, glowing uh, perfume. Mm, yeah, and it's good for spring. The 2021 is slightly different and much more powdery because they add iris, so this iris, peony, lily of the valley. Some fruity notes also have been added with the abricot, the peach, so you get something a little bit more fruity 
and definitely more powdery with the iris and there's also vanilla on the dry down so they're both good i think for for spring definitely and you have also like i said the blooming bouquet launched in 2014 with pink peony rose and white musk and i think the blooming bouquet is a little bit lighter a little bit whiter actually it's more white a little bit more innocent even aquatic, uh, something a little bit aquatic in this version with white musk, so clean, whitey and lighter than the 2017 and the 2021 version. Beautiful, I think they're both beautiful for spring. Okay, another perfume I like also to wear for spring is Twilly by Hermes, launched in 2017. This is a new fragrance uh, launched by Hermes, inspired by the iconic Twilly scarf, you know. It's an iconic piece from Hermes. And this perfume is a youthful, fresh, floral, Parisian version of Hermes. That's why you get also something a little bit creamy and woodsy. Spicy, fresh on the opening, whitey, pure, creamy on the dry down, and woodsy, of course, on the base. This is a great spring perfume. The fourth one is J Pure Bracelet by Bouchon Lens in 2012. And let me tell you, this is one of the most underrated spring perfume. Nobody, I think nobody on YouTube, very few people on YouTube talk about this one. This is such an underrated spring perfume that I used to review in Miami and for the price, the quality of this perfume is amazing. It's fresh, aromatic, uh, very aromatic and a little bit aquatic on the opening. I remember something almost marine on the opening, which is super weird because there's a lot of green notes on the opening with the orange, the verbena, and the petit grain. So it's floral, it's fresh, it's greeny, it's aquatic. This is one also one of my most complimented uh, perfume uh, that I used to wear in Miami. I got a lot, a lot of compliments about this one. And the projection is super good, which is amazing for the price of this perfume. It's a great quality price perfume and a beautiful spring perfume. Okay, an iconic spring perfume. I think another thing can beat this one and I don't see this one a lot on YouTube too. This is Paris from Yves Saint Laurent. I love this one. This is definitely a spring version of Paris. Beautiful composition made by Sophia Grosjean and this is a rose perfume. So the rose in this perfume is definitely predominant. There's several different roses in Paris, but the main direction of this rose is powdery, fresh and light. So you get something very fresh. I think there's rose de mer and rose de grasse in this one and it's super complex it's one of these perfume you know from the 80s super complex but this is a super nice spring perfume this is paris let me tell you this is paris in a bottle and it's definitely a perfume i want to add in my collection this year the sixth one is chanel number 19 and i'm talking about the eau de parfum version launched in 1970 this is an iconic perfume and when you think about spring you think about something green and i always always think about chanel number no. 19. i'm also going to talk about the different version of this one but let's talk first about the main version the eau de parfum so it's a green powdery almost earthy with something very, very light and fresh on the opening but definitely a green perfume if you don't like something sweet for spring if you're not super into you know very sweety glowing opulent flowers you're gonna love this one because it's green it's fresh and it's powdery almost earthy with a galbanum on the opening and you know galbanum it's a very earthy uh, flower you also have the poudre version and like you know the name the poudre version is much much more powdery because they is iris and a violet so iris and jasmine super powdery green version and in my opinion i definitely prefer the poudre version um it's softer greener and much more powdery so my preference goes for the poudre version if you're interested to buy a spring perfume go for the poudre version it's wonderful. And if you want a spring version of one of my favorite perfume ever, there is the Chanel number no. five, Le Première, launched in 2015. 
It's a much more modern uh, version of the Chanel number no. 5. If you think that Chanel number no. 5 is too retro, too vintage, you don't like the soapy notes, which I can understand, but I love this one. Uh, there is the Chanel Le Premier launch in 2015. It's a fresher, more, mm, more modern, more citrusy, more breezy version of the Chanel number no. 5, and you don't get this super soapy. Of course, they still have the idea in this one. But the soapy note is very, very much subtle. So much subtle, discreet and delicate. And of course, if I talk about a spring perfume, I can't, I can't, I can't just mention one of my favorite perfumes ever. My signature perfume, the one where really it changed my life. This is a life changer, definitely a life changer, let me tell you. Of course, it's Durissimo. Uh, eau de parfum. This one is about one of my favorite uh, flower and such a spring flower. It's Lily of the Valley. This is one of the best French uh, flower ever. And for me, it's the most delicate, the most elegant. There's Lily of the Valley, Jasmine and Musk. Just a few, a few ingredients in this one. And it's so much more than just a few ingredients, just Jasmine. But the Lily of the Valley in this one is pure. It's fresh, green at the opening and a very creamy, a very, yeah, very whitey, exactly like Lily of the Valley, natural uh, scent. You got jasmine, and in this uh, perfume, the jasmine is very watery, light, almost water. I think it's almost like jasmine water. It's beautiful, a little bit indolic, I'm gonna say a little bit indolic, and you got musk, and musk uh, makes everything in this perfume. Yeah, it's a clean, feminine, luxury perfume and this is my signature one and you should get this one for spring. A Forever and Ever by Dior launched in 2009 and this is a very interesting uh, perfume. This is also a discovery for me. This one is a beautiful um, watery rose perfume and the rose in this one is like the rose de mai. Not rose de grasse but much more like the rose de mai. It's fresh, light. Uh, almost a little bit watery and you got Frisia, so it's a sweet pink perfume with Frisia, Jasmine and Rose. And beware because mm, this one might be discontinued and it's not listed on Fragantica but this perfume has almond, nutmeg, spicy, uh, vanilla. So it's extremely complex rose perfume. But the vibe is a sweet, pink, light uh, perfume. It's clean, soft, airy, feminine, like a fluffy, pink clouds. You got the vibe, it's a beautiful spring perfume. Bulgari Eau Parfumé Té Vert 1992. So cardamom, bergamot, orange blossom, jasmine, lily of the valley, rose, green tea on the base, beautiful green tea. Yeah, beautiful green tea on the base and musk. I used to love this one. I think it's also a great spring perfume if you don't like you know sweet and cloying floral this one is floral but you got the fresh aromatic notes and a beautiful green tea it's a beautiful spring perfume and this one perfume i just love extremely luxury smelling super expensive this is sakura by dior rose jasmine edion there's also violet and one musk so it's floral clean and green on the opening and if you love like i do the cherry blossom note you should get sakura by dior another one and we are in the lily of the valley notes and of course i should mention this one this is lucky by dior still in the private blend collection launched in 2018 so this is lily of the valley perfume uh, same you know same direction same vibe compared to durissimo but this one is slightly fresher greener than durissimo durissimo eau de parfum has something opulent very much opulent and indolic um, this one is definitely a little bit greener and fresher. So Lily of the Valley, white flower. You got beautiful ozonic notes. Uh, this is such an iconic perfume. Unfortunately, this one is discontinued. Vanvert, this is such an iconic springy perfume. It was the only perfume in the world with such galbanum concentration. Not only earthy, but almost toxic. So this is Vanvert, it's called spring, green spring. If I translate, this is a toxic green, fresh, light uh, perfume. It's a green wind in your face. I love this perfume. I have to, to, to smell this one because I had to get a, a whiff of this one 
Oh yeah, oh my god, yes, such um, Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of Eau de Lancôme and I'm gonna talk about this one in a few minutes but it reminds me of the Eau de Lancôme super green, uh, fresh, earthy and on the base, on the dry down, the dry down of this perfume is amazing, gorgeous, it's yeah, the dry down gets more and more flowery and you still get the toxic notes and we would see that come up at the end I don't like the opening of on there. I love the dry down. I love the dry down and no one can replace uh, this perfume. There's no one in the market right now which is like a Vendere used to be. I also love this one. It's Eau de Lancôme, launched in 1969. This is also a summery perfume, but for me, the greeny notes, uh, almost a little bit earthy also, are very springy, but I could also mention this one for summer. So this is an iconic perfume, and it's probably also one of my favorite one from Lancôme with Poem. I love this one. This is a fresh, aromatic, light, bright and flowery perfume, a little bit sharp and woody also on the base because of the vetiver and the sandalwood. There's also Ocmos in this one, so you get something slightly, uh, slightly greeny, slightly earthy, slightly almost toxic. There's no galbanum, but they choose something a little bit more aromatic with the basil, the rosemary, the coriander and the jasmine. So this is a jasmine perfume, the only flower in this perfume is the jasmine, so if you love jasmine, you're gonna find a very fresh and indolic jasmine at the same time. I think it's also a great after shower perfume for summer or for spring. And on the uh, opening, it's a very eau de cologne um, vibe, eau de cologne direction. It's very citrusy, so lemon, bergamot, honeysuckle, and mandarin orange. This perfume is a masterpiece. This is a masterpiece cologne for women. There's very few cologne for women in the market, very few of them, but this one is such an iconic masterpiece uh, perfume. Another one, and this is the last one, this is Kenzo Flowers, launched in 2000, so this is a 2000 perfume. Uh, this is light, ethereal, sensual, and super flowery. I remember something a little bit aquatic also, with some aquatic watery notes. And at the same time, very indolic because it's opulent. There's something very opulent in the perfume. You got rose, violet, black currants. So the freshness of this perfume come from the black currants, jasmine and vanilla. This is a beautiful, complex Japanese inspired perfume, very sophisticated and super flowery but for me it's a beautiful spring perfume because of this combination because of this freshness and floral blend that's it for today for this spring perfume all i hope you enjoy this video don't forget to subscribe don't forget also to leave a comment to tell me what you think about all these perfumes is there anyone you already love you already wear is there any new id you got for spring a perfume iconic timeless chic elegant let me know in the comments and i see you very soon for another perfume review bye